a really it's a really good question actually and i think part of the fact that creativity and innovation are often lumped together means that one or both of them get a bit of a bad rap um often when people think about talk about creativity it then naturally leads to the idea of creatives and then there are certain types of people who are creative and that potentially then can exclude some people from the creative process and then in terms of innovation when i have heard innovation being criticized or people unclear about what innovation is it's because they think it's all about being creative and all about just being expansive and blue sky and in its most extreme sitting around on beanbags and having lots of expansive conversations whereas actually both of them are core to creating something different but they are different in and of themselves i think creativity is a behavior and it's an input into innovation. It's a way of behaving. It's about taking away what you currently know to be true or about challenging what you currently know to be true to, uh, as a behavior to be able to come up with something innovative. And innovative innovation to me is, is about coming up with something completely new that creates either economic or social value. Creativity probably doesn't have a process around it whereas I think innovation very much has a process we use design thinking other organizations use lean startup thinking but whereas creativity is much more free-flowing innovation is a process that you can follow they are both symbiotic and important to get to a new idea ultimately but I think one's a behavior and one ultimately is a, a process and an output I don't know, I think it's probably harder to map the tangible outcome from creativity. But if you think, if you, if you looked at innovative projects and those people who are being innovative, I bet if you peel back some of the onions, they had to some extent some creative input, some creative discipline, a lot of them that led them to the point where they were able to challenge the status quo or imagine what currently isn't possible. If I think about myself, uh, you know, my first degree was an English degree. And I remember my parents, my brother was a lawyer uh, uh, and my, uh, my father an accountant. And I remember my parents being quite surprised or really unencouraging of me doing an English degree because what possible job would that get me to do? Um, when I was a child, I was very much involved in drama. I went to an evening drama class. I, I acted professionally for a number of years in television programs. So my kind of creative skills were honed quite early on. Now, actually, I think one of the reasons that I have blossomed personally in the innovation space is because I had that creative practice growing up. And it's allowed me to create things from nothing, to imagine, imagine myself into a scene that doesn't actually exist. And therefore, it's not that hard of a jump to then think, right, <clears throat> how can I imagine myself in the mindset of a, a customer or imagine my mindset of an employee inside an organization? And um, I actually am on the board of um, a community arts center in North London called Islington Arts Factory. Um, and one of the reasons that we exist is because we believe people can reach their absolute full potential through creativity as well. It's about exploring your whole self. So I think, I think you're right, creativity often is undervalued, but if you look at those people like Steve Jobs, he did a calligraphy course for goodness sake. You know, those people who, who are really excelling at innovation are often the ones who've had some sort of creative discipline or creative practice in their own personal background. Yeah, I mean, and also creativity, you know, when you're in the ideation stage of innovation, you have to say, you know, how could this be possible? What if we tried it like this? Um, and it's only when you, when you kind of move on to the next stage where you're saying, let's, let's sort of sift through some of these ideas, let's see which ones we'll put into prototype and then test that you need to, you know, the reductive element comes in. Creativity is actually at the core of the innovation process. You're doing your insight to begin with, which is very expansive and you're just absorbing lots of information. You're getting really reductive and kind of defining what your challenge is. Then you're being incredibly expansive. And I kind of use expansive and creative kind of interchangeably. You're just opening up your mind to a world of possibilities, taking away all of your conscious or unconscious biases, trying to ignore all your assumptions that you currently have to say what could be possible, then you get more kind of reductive again. And the reason creativity is so important is because 
it allows you also to have ideas that your competitors aren't having. It's that each of us brings a unique, a unique point of view, which is why I'm so passionate about diversity and innovation as well. Everyone brings a unique point of view, a unique history to the innovation table. <clears throat> with that experience and through exercising your creative muscle, you're able to come up with ideas that your competitor just won't have if your organization allows you to release your creative potential. And that is often a challenge in the way we measure with our P&Ls and with our profit forecasts and reporting to the city nowadays. It's interesting that you bring up the, um, the issue of diversity, that again, there seems to be um, some people favor the association between creativity and diversity for the reasons that you've just suggested that you bring different, your unique ideas to the table and sometimes even the conflict that arises because of diverse points of views, even in that conflict, new ideas can be generated. Absolutely. Yeah, that intersection of tension is vital, absolutely, because, um, <clears throat> you know, you can look at something like Nokia, which was basically men from the same village, all with the same kind of background, and they, stop, they are no longer the number one mobile phone company in the world. Absolutely, bringing different points of view um, and clashing those points of view, but in a respectful way, can reveal absolute new truths and new propositions. I think at its core, everyone is creative. So whether it's biological, you know, you could say it's biological. I don't believe it's biological. I don't believe it's social. I, I, I believe that everybody is, is born creative. Um, if I look at my three nieces, they are incredibly, they are without any self-consciousness. They're, sort of, you know, 11, 9 and 9. 11 year olds beginning to get a bit of self-consciousness now. And <clears throat> the levels of creativity they have are absolutely massive because they don't know the rules yet, firstly. They don't know all the rules of something, why something isn't possible or if something is possible or not. So they're constantly creatively pushing the boundaries. They also don't have the levels of self-consciousness that you or I might have in the public sphere. And this was really brought home to me recently when I was reading in one of my niece's schools. You know, you go in and you read at lunchtime to the children or take an afternoon class. And I, <coughs> I was thinking about this whole idea of being self-conscious and the impact it has on creativity because we don't want to look foolish, we don't want to fail, we don't want to expose ourselves in, in, when we're adults. But I asked the class before I started reading, who here can sing? And 85% of the class, if not more, put their hands up and said, me, me, me. And, <coughs> and I thought to myself, I would never go into a board meeting and ask the same question, hear the same response. But I bet every single exec member, you know, gives it their best go at Christmas or Eid or whatever it might be. So why? And I was thinking it's because we learn to manage our perceptions. And if we're putting those constraints on ourselves, we're limiting our levels of creativity. And I think that is a challenge in organizations where people can, can be creative comfortably, expose themselves and make them a bit vulnerable make themselves vulnerable because vulnerability is also really important to innovation by putting an idea forward by being creative and putting something forward that currently doesn't exist you're exposing yourself to being shot down you're exposing yourself to being criticized and you're also revealing quite a bit around the way you think um, and if that is not responded to positively then you probably won't come back the next time you'll just follow the status quo you'll just do what you're expected to do and at best get a little bit of tinkering and a little bit of you know incremental innovation in when you're talking about your nieces and their creativity when you're talking about that 85 percent of the children who say they can sing yeah. um yes that's self-expression that's singing but um we can we call it creativity unless there is value in it obviously there's value for the child there's value in you know, those who are entertained by that singing, but perhaps the reason in the board, uh, in, in your board meeting, the reason why most people wouldn't put up their hands to say that I can sing is because they have learned that they don't sing in a way that is pleasing to others. And therefore, they wouldn't meet that social evaluation criteria of like, well, it's, you can you can sing, but it's not pleasing so therefore it's not creative not a value i think what, what, it, what, it, what is interesting about that is i'm sure that some of those children 
are very unpleasing <laughs> in their tones as well. But they were willing. They were willing to give it a go because they were willing. They they, they didn't. They didn't know <laughs> that. Um, they, and they didn't really think about how they might be perceived. And I think that it, what for me that whether they can sing or not, what they were saying is I'm not conscious or managing perceptions of myself at this stage in my life. However, you know, as we grow older, we start managing perceptions of ourselves. And therefore, I think we can put limits on how, how creative we are, how expressive we are, and potentially then um, how challenging, how many new ideas we can come up with because we're always managing our position. Right. And so the social cultural point of, uh, approach to creativity would, uh, would say, well, anything that we label creative needs to pass that social evaluation. So it's, it's not just our own perceptions because that's self-indulgence or narcissism. It needs to be valuable to others, not only to ourselves. Oh, interesting. That, that brings a whole lot of judgment in, doesn't it? Quite early on in the equation. Yeah. Uh, and for me, you know, certainly from the way I look at innovation, I think, you know, judging ideas and judging the creativity does have its place. Um, I think it's from an innovation perspective, it's fairly far down the funnel and probably a lot further down than a lot of organisations or individuals would, uh, would currently argue. Um, I, I mean, I'll refer back to the, when I talked about the Islington Arts Factory, about um, developing your whole self and creative expression, helping you to develop your whole self. If you are working your hardest to sort of self-actualize and really develop your whole self, I think you're in a much stronger position to feel confident as well, to then explore new opportunities, to put new ideas forward. And I believe that a creative practice can help you get more in touch with your whole self as well. Possibly doesn't always deliver immediate, you know, economic value or maybe even immediate social value, but the individual value it brings that enables you then to have confidence and the strength to put another point of view forward means that ultimately I believe it will create either economic mm -hmm. or social value. Yeah, I agree with you that it's that self-confidence and the courage to take risks that would lead to something being created. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there is interestingly, Google in their nine notions of innovation have a notion which says creativity loves constraint, which I think is a really interesting expression. And I've explored that a little bit further with talking to some of the, the team that I know at Google. And they talk about actually, um, if you just give someone absolute free license, all the money, all the resources, everything they absolutely need, then what often happens is they don't produce the best output because it, you kind of get a bit sort of flabby and a bit woolly and a bit kind of lazy. And they believe by putting some constraints, not giving you everything that you need, it forces you to be a little bit more creative. And what Google is saying there is creativity is absolutely at the core of their notions around what makes innovation and ultimately what makes them successful. Um, and you can't argue that they are creating economic value at Google. Yeah. It, it makes you respond in a particular way. And I think uh, by putting constraints on you, again, if you're a confident person um, and you have a clear sense of direction, you know, my, my Irish grandmother used to say, necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. And Google have just, you know, expressed it in a more modern way. Yes. So um, from, a, from a business perspective, I think it is, uh, it is a tool that should be taught. Um, I think, you know, as you learn time management, as you learn communication skills, as you learn Microsoft 360 Office Suite, I think more and more organizations that will be competitive are the ones where they have newer and fresher ideas right across the organization, whether that's support functions, whether that's frontline functions, customer interfacing functions, or wherever it might be. Teaching people the skills to, to be creative and to have ideas means that you'll get faster, better, lower cost, and more relevant products and services right across your organization. So make it a core business skill, teach it on the MBAs, and teach it on your training courses. Okay. Excellent.